Hello and welcome back to Read Becca. Today we are talking about yet another book to prize book review. This one is The Art of Losing from Alice Zenitor and translated by Frank Wynn. I was judging the translated fiction category of the booktube prize. If you want to know anything more about the booktube prize, I will link it down below because I've talked about it a lot. So if you're seeing this, this has either been eliminated or won. Um, I went in with, with very high hopes. This is a generational saga, I would say, which I'm, I'm not always into. And it follows three generations. So we are starting with Ali and his wife, Yema, primarily Ali is focused on, in Algeria. And they're at the time shortly before the withdrawal of the French from Algeria after kind of conflict with liberation forces. And so we follow Ali as he's having kind of normal life. He, he was a, a veteran, um, so we start with him young and becoming a soldier. Um, his rise to success through, through some luck, and he becomes a prominent figure in his community there in Algeria. However, um, because he was veteran, he ends up kind of in conflict with the liberation forces. And that winds up pushing him toward immigrating. And so we go through the immigration process of him with this young family. Uh, his son Hamid becomes the second generation that we follow. So, so we go through immigration to France and dealing with refugee camps, uh, dealing with re refugee housing after that, and getting jobs um, where there's very much a, a feeling of not having everything they had before and, and having lost something. So I think we, we then progress to, to Hamid being a first generation in, in France and having been raised with a different um, setting and community than he was, he was being raised in uh, Algeria with, and things being very different. So there's certainly a cultural clash there that is the main focus, I think, of Hamid, the son's uh, story. So as he progresses, he gets farther and farther away from his parents, I think, in, in France, and eventually kind of moves away and gets a French girlfriend and grows up, gets married, and then we progress on to his daughter, Naima. Uh, she, she seems very headstrong and independent, and she's pretty fully integrated into French culture. Um, by the time we see her, and she's working for an art gallery and winds up getting a, a project that, that might send her back to Algeria. And so we're seeing her really come into, not conflict, but confront, I think, the fact that she doesn't know hardly anything about her Algerian roots, um, even though she's sort of in contact with her grandparents who, who immigrated they don't speak French and she doesn't speak Arabic. So so they can only have kind of halting conversations. So she just doesn't know anything about Algeria's history, why they left Algeria, why the country kind of fractured in the way that it did. And she doesn't know anything about kind of the Algerian immigrant experience because she's heard so little about it from her father and her grandparents. So I think that's the main plot. Um, telling you she's going to go back to Algeria is, is not a spoiler. <laughs> it happens late. It's dropped in through early parts of the book that, that she is doing that. So, so that's an interesting thing that we'll come back to here. So how did I feel about it? I was very underwhelmed. I, I went in with high hopes, as I said, and I, I don't always like generational sagas. And that actually was, I think, the thing it did the most well. <laughs> um, Let's, yeah, let's stay on what it did well first, because because it, it did do quite a few things well. It just really didn't live up to kind of my expectations. Um, so what it did really well, and let me put this down because I've got I've got a lot to talk through. So what it did well, uh, it starts really with the history. I think it definitely gave me a much much better sense of. Um, what happened in terms of the French colonization, um, the the conflict between the the locals in Algeria and the French, their kind of indifference to what was going on with with the in independence movement. Um, so I think the history elements, um, or even even the immigration to France, that being kind of a massive thing, is not not something I I knew about, and that leads into as well something that's more imminent to us today is the very anti-Islamic sentiment in France. And I kind of knew that was a thing, but I didn't have any understanding of why or how 
that was different from the ways that, that it perpetuates in America. And now we have a much deeper understanding of, of what exactly that is and where the roots of that are in France. So it also gave me a much more complex understanding of the, not necessarily the culture, but the identity within the culture of these people from Algeria, where even when they were still within Algeria, this family rejected the idea that they were either French or Arab at the same time. And yet they, they do identify with, with both of those identities. So it's a very complex identity in terms of, of who are they. And they, they kind of just consider themselves their, their own little isolated subset, uh, um, separate from any other larger group. So that was really interesting to understand kind of why they were so reluctant to, to associate with, with um, different kind of movements that were going on at the time. So and then what it did so excellently, as I said, the number one thing about this book that, that is a selling point is that it completely portrays in a personal way the progression of immigrant generations and, and how they change and move and the integration into culture um, or, or resistance to do that, I would say, which is another thing we'll come back to. So I think that was just the, the stellar part of this book. So then, unfortunately, let's talk about the stuff I didn't like. Uh, the first one is stuff that pulled me out of the story. Um, the writing wasn't anything really super special. The prose is is very window pane, but especially in the first part where we are following Ali, um, we're getting these history info dumps. Uh, they're like a paragraph long of just just historical information, and it feels like she wants to give you a history lesson but then also is trying to tell a story and doesn't ever like get to a cohesive place with the two things <laughs> like it definitely feels like it's pulling you out of the story the other one i, I already mentioned is that that naima is sort of dropped in at, at different points like she'll just have a sentence pop up of what she's doing i guess um in parts one and two which are which are following ali her grandfather and um, Hamid, her father. And so they're in the present time at the end of the book, but yet they're being dropped in earlier in the book. And it doesn't, it doesn't make sense because the, the framing of this is in a very disconnected, like, like overview. It's, it's not really a, a narrator. It would make sense if she were our narrator and she were going back to explore her history or something, but, but that doesn't really happen in this book. Um, it's, she's not telling us the story. We're just in this disconnected, you know, um, watcher perspective of seeing this play out. And yeah, so it didn't make sense that she was there showing up and that pulled me out of the story a couple times. So I also could not help comparing certain things about this because this is so political. It's about political conflict. Uh, I couldn't help comparing it with a book I previously read for the Book Two Prize, The Republic of False Truths. And this just had a very stark lack of nuance comparatively. Um, in this, we we do see certain things like like generational divide, um, their, their sentiments being completely different over the generations. Um, and, and a lot of that plays into how that immigrant experience plays out. But we never really see both sides of what's going on politically. Um, we never see any nuance or depth whatsoever. So, so in Republic of False Truths, we started with really unlikable characters and then it built from there to show us, well, these people who are resisting or, or trying to resist um, those in power have challenges to doing that. And here's what the, those are and here's kind of why their hands are tied in certain ways. And then it, it looked at kind of the average person who was against resistance and how they had been propagandized in, in many ways. So it tried to give us a lot more nuance about what was going on and the intents of people in this conflict. Here there was none of that. Um, and unfortunately it was, it was very unlikable. And not only were the characters quite unlikable throughout, for, for me anyway, um, I, I just couldn't get behind the characters. And I have a lot more to say about that. But in terms of, of this aspect, the political aspect, the one thing I absolutely found intolerable about this is it exclusively gave the reader a single lens and that lens was 
basically like the colonizers okay. And I really was upset by that. Um, we are shown that those fighting for liberation 100% of the time were angry young men who were basically terrorists. And it was a very like self-centered view, I think, was, was what it was meaning to get across. But considering it was just dropping us all these historical facts, like why didn't it show us what the political movements were? What, what were the larger picture elements <laughs> politically? What were people intending to do for the country? At no point um, do the characters in Algeria that we see think about what is more important or, or what would be good for the country. It's very much self-serving. It's very much about like what's best for me or or what's least worst for me is really how it goes, you know. Um, and so that, that gets Ali in a lot of trouble because, you know, he, he sides with the indifferent French for the most part over these these literal terrorists who are just going around attacking people. So so yeah, I, I hated that. I hate being shoved into a single perspective, even though that often is Case with you know any novel you're reading or even nonfiction, you're getting a lens of the the author. But I, I just did not like how one-sided this was. So going back to unlikable characters, um, and not being able to get on board with these characters. So I had many points that were just really horrible for me, and I think starting out the two that I would I would mention that are in. The, within the first hundred pages that are, I, I would say, are content warnings, really, are that um, something comes up with the exorcism of an infant, number one, and then number two, um, genital mutilation of a child. And there was just no, like, getting me back on board with these characters and wanting to follow these characters after that, pretty much. Um, the latter being basically this big cultural celebration and everybody was like excited about it and clearly the boy didn't know what was going to happen both the boy and the parents are extremely traumatized by this but yet at no point is it even considered that maybe we should not do this um and then it's completely trivialized in the text um kind of joking about um, or jokingly comparing it to how how traumatized um baby Naima is in the future when her father pretends to steal her nose. I do not understand how you can even hold those two things up as like in the same text. Like that was just so off-putting to me. I, I wanted to put it aside and not read anymore after that. So, so yeah, there was very little coming back for those characters after that. I, I did not want to like emotionally connect with them <laughs> at all. Um, then in terms of once they've moved on, they, they get into this refugee camp and, and they have nothing. They've lost everything that they, they own. And we're viewing kind of more from the Hamid perspective and he's so frustrated because his parents are, and I think this is, this is the continued unlikableness of them. They have that like disgraced millionaire <laughs> idea that we get in America a lot where, where people kind of live beyond their means and so, so we see that play out over and over and over, um, where they, they think they should still have the status that they had in Algeria, and they, they are actively grudging about not having it anymore. Uh, and they kind of blame other people. So they're trying to put up a front. Um, at, at points, we have things like them, them buying a lot of stuff they, they can't afford to sh outwardly show their status to other people and continue to be superior to the people around them, which is really gross. Um, the the specific thing that, that sets off something something large for, for Hamid is them buying the fattest sheep for, for Eid and them having to do that and him just wanting shoes. Like he, he just wants to have shoes that aren't holy. And yeah, it, it just really shows where the separation um, between the two generations happens because he can't relate to their strong affinity to their culture that is manifesting in a really toxic way and so it, it distances him from his parents in that way. We also see, and again I think this is cultural, but it, it doesn't really get laid out that way. Um, it's very dismissed and almost glossed over. Um, Yema, so Ali's, Ali's wife, she's not his first wife. Um, he kind of drops previous wives because they aren't giving him a son. So that 
was another gross thing that happens right at the beginning. So, so Yama um, keeps getting pregnant while they're in this refugee camp, while they have nothing, they can't support themselves, and she keeps having babies. But the first time that she gets pregnant, um, she's like actively shamed for being afraid um, or worrying about the fact that she has she's lost a baby before. And I found that, again, just really terrible. So, so really didn't like it. So I just really struggled at getting behind those characters for all these intrinsic reasons. Um, they were also extremely bigoted. So they, they were bigoted toward people of color. Uh, they don't consider themselves Arabs. They don't consider themselves French, as I said before. At one point, it's even relayed that the person they hate the most from, from Algeria, from where they were from, is better than any Frenchman, is what they think. And so they have these extremely blatantly bigoted views. Um, at one point, Hamid, as a child, kind of goes out and, and is a victim of, of bigotry, and he comes back and they kind of just dismiss it and say, well, what did you expect? Everybody outside is, is a bigot. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, have you looked in a mirror recently? So they have these very, very um, extreme views and no self-awareness. So I think those are the major turnoffs. There were also some some other minor things, like there was a definite lack of, of setting in this. I happened to be reading My Life in France by Julia Child at the same time as this, and there's a, there's a lot of time and setting overlap here, where like in that book, even things like traffic are very clearly depicted. Like you have a an absolute sense of place. And here you don't. You have absolutely none of that. Um, there are certain moments where you get like the sense of their extremely overcrowded house because they just keep buying too much stuff or having to go to the toilet outside. There are these like brief moments, but you never get a larger understanding of the community or, or the city. Um, there are scenes in Paris that I feel like should have a ton of description and, and we get nothing. So there was there was a very like stark um, contrast there when I was reading this other book that was super well described and, and absolutely nothing here. So kind of the last thing is the ending. I think at the very beginning we're dropped some glimmers of something that could be building into into a big ending. And that never that never kind of turns into anything at all. Uh, however, what we actually get is is Naima kind of monologuing a little bit. Um, about like her her grandfather and, and that she like has these thoughts about what her grandfather thinks or or feels and in reality like she she is making that connection out of thin air um she has gone back to her homeland and she's gone to where her people are from she's met distant family that she could barely talk to um and so she now feels some connection with, with that home. But again, she's talking about this, this grandfather who she can't communicate with because he chose not to learn the language of the place he has now lived the majority of his life um, because he, he doesn't want to associate himself with the French, obviously. And so she, she hasn't actually had a conversation with him about anything. She hasn't learned anything about his history. She hasn't learned any of this story from him or her father, as far as we can tell in the story. So what it amounts to, to me, is it's kind of sentimental BS, her, her monologuing about her now connection with her grandfather. She doesn't have a connection with her grandfather. She never had a single conversation with him about this, really. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that was just, you know, it, it felt very forced and fake. And as I said, sentimental BS. I, I didn't buy into it. So um, yeah, this was selling me a lot of things I, I didn't buy into, as I said, um, from the characters to kind of the, the tone to the lens about politics being very limited. I just wanted so much more um, in nuance and depth about that story, about the, the interior of the characters, and I didn't get it. So this one was a bit of a disappointment for me, unfortunately, and I suspect I'm on the wrong side of things um, in terms of what I've seen before from people who read this in earlier rounds. So we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, and hopefully for me, there are better books in my in my lot because this is the first one I have read. So, so I'm hoping we, we come out with some books that I like a little more. So that's it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching.